What's up strangers, welcome to the Wealth Game Nation, my name is Vedo and I'm here to help you better understand the Wealth Game and become part of the Wealth Game Nation. In today's video we will look at how to spend 100 million dollars, or basically how to invest it, but spending sounds more cooler, and don't get thrown off by the number, it's just a number, it works for any other number as well. So stay until the end and you will see. Let's get right into it. How to spend 100 million dollars. On today's agenda we will look at why even bother. We will look at the top six asset classes to invest in. We will look at the ultimate allocation of those asset classes, and then we'll get to my thoughts. First, why even bother? Well, we have to start somewhere. We are all aware of horror stories from riches to rags. The expression is from rags to riches, but in this case, it's from riches to rags. You've heard about the luckiest lottery winner ever who won the lottery twice and is uh, homeless and broke. We do not want to be this person. Generational money losses, basically when the latest generation, the youngest generation, loses all the money that the previous generations have made. And also the last in the list is our crypto bros hitting lightning in a bottle when you know they invest in those meme coins and then they go to the moon and then they lose it all because they don't understand this is just hype and not real. Uh, the principle of investing is the same. It doesn't matter what kind of number you're working with, in principle is the same. There is a little difference between having a thousand or a million. To invest when you look at it in investing terms and you gotta dream big so why not do it let's look at the top six asset classes to invest in first one is stocks or equities stocks represent shares of ownership in publicly traded companies historically this asset class has outperformed the other asset classes average annual rate of return of the overall stock market is around 9.8 percent this is the most popular asset class as you can start investing in the stock market with very little capital fixed income or bonds they are more stable than the stocks as they have a set rate of return. This is when you borrow money for a longer period of time, usually years, and secure a safe set of return. Average annual rate of return for bonds is around 4.2%. Next is cash or cash equivalents. It's similar to, to fixed income or bonds. It's basically again borrowing money, but for a shorter period of time, usually up to 90 days. The rate of returns for cash equivalents is obviously smaller than the fixed income bonds. Next one is real estate. This is by far the biggest asset class in the world by market cap and also the oldest one. Most of the time you would need to have a bigger capital in order to get into real estate, but lately there is also some ways around this. Return on investment is twofold. There's price appreciation and rental income. Average annual rate of return for real estate is around 4.3%. Next one is commodities. This is when you invest in physical goods such as gold, platinum, crude oils, natural gas, corn, etc. Value of commodities rise over time. They are not a value producing asset, and historically this asset class has been used to keep up with inflation but lately this is not happening as the inflation is extremely high this asset class has low correlation to the other asset classes an average return rate of commodities is 2.3 percent lastly we have alternative asset classes those are expensive jewelry rare cars art cryptocurrencies alcohol etc return on investment varies significantly from year to year this is also not a value producing asset it's something that appreciates in value now let's come to the ultimate allocation this is how i have set up my own portfolio even though it's not 100 million but it's still the principle is the same so we'll look at the asset class allocation in percentage and allocation in dollar amount first real estate allocation 40 percent equal to 40 million stocks also 40 percent 40 million crypto 5 percent 5 million and then cash 15 percent this all comes down to the 100 million when investing in the real estate when investing in real estate, I would invest partially into residential real estate and then partially into commercial real estate. Let's say the average rate of return is 4%. This is 1.6 million per year. Stocks also, let's say the dividend paying stocks are paying 4%. This is also 1.6%. Crypto is not an asset that produces value. So there it's with 0%. Of course, you can borrow it and you know make some money there, but that's not something that I would do. So therefore, I, for me, it's a zero. Also for cash, for me, cash is zero because I don't borrow money. Basically, I don't want to make interest on borrowing money. For me, that's zero. That comes down to 3.2 million per year. When we average this on a monthly basis, this comes down to $266,660. I would say a pretty nice amount to live off of. And this is the graphical representation of this allocation. Now, if we go one step further, the stock portfolio and their allocation again in dollars and percentages, I would be investing 40% in ETFs. This is about 16 million. 
dividend paying stocks about 40 percent this is 60 million as well and then growth stocks 20 percent which is eight comes down to the 40 million we spoke about before this is how the graphical representation looks like then if we look at crypto portfolio allocation dollar amount and percentage is bitcoin 40 percent 2 million ethereum 40 percent also 2 million and then other high market cap coins 20 percent which equals to 1 million and those that's the 5 million here as well their allocation in a visual form now let's get to my thoughts today anybody can be financially free information is available instantly and for everybody unfortunately and i say really unfortunately there is no secret formula how to get there it is very simple it is not easy but it's simple it's also very hard because you, you need a lot of persistence in order to get there you need to evaluate income versus outcome you need to make more than you spend either by making more or spending less one of those two and then invest the difference make your own allocation that fits your own personal character don't overdo it don't overthink it stay the course keep on long-term outlook and dollar cost average educate yourself by doing your own research avoid hype don't leverage don't trade don't short don't invest more than you can afford these are all the things that do not work over long term 80 percent of traders do not make it shorting is to time the market this is a short-term game but in the long term it does not work and you should not be investing more than you can afford last but not least diversify but don't diversify basically do not spread yourself too thin that's it thank you very much for watching i hope you find value in this video if you did i would appreciate it if you would leave a comment tell me what is your allocation of your portfolio how would you be spending 100 million also please make sure to share subscribe like helps me a lot out if you guys do it thank you so much and until next time